this is a nuanced question, but you're just sort of judging and not judging, mm -hmm. right? You know, in other words, you, you want to find your true north and you want to have some moral compass that can help you mm -hmm. get there, but others are going to make different decisions. And so, um, you know, I was thinking about um, Pope Francis, right, who famously said, you know, who am I to judge, right, at the end of one of his um, commentaries, and, um, you know, you're the Pope, that's your job, right, to judge, right, so. It would be funny um, to go back in time, grab some, like, 14th century popes, yeah. <laughs> bring them to the present day, and have them listen to him say, say that. Well, <laughs> but you see where I'm getting at, like, this sort of, this sense of, um, of, 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 of making a decision and perhaps a commitment, um, on, but also being humble about it. Um, and that seems to be a problem in our society today where it's like my right versus, ethics is often seen as another sort of challenge we have, ethics, oh, it's your right versus somebody else's right or somebody else's wrong and so on. So have you thought about how to open up that space a little more for yeah. judging, not judging? So a frequent um, uh, rebuttal to when, when someone is posed with, um, or someone is presented with a, an action that maybe one person thinks is the ethical thing to do. A frequent rebuttal is to say, that impinges upon my liberty, right? Mm -hmm. That's a huge, that's a very American thing. Um, liberty, 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 freedom, uh, American flag, bald eagle, uh, get off my lawn kind of liberty, right? And the, the thing that bums me out about it is I believe that the idea here is, as an individual, alone in your house, go nuts, right? Like, you have all the liberty you want. You can listen to whatever music you want. You can say whatever you want out loud. You can do anything that you believe is you expressing your true beliefs. You leave your house and you bump into other people. Then suddenly there's, like, imagine like a sphere around you, and that sphere bumps up around the sphere of another person, and now it's not just liberty, now it's a negotiation. Now this right. person has a liberty, and you have a liberty, a sense of liberty, and those two things meet, and where they meet is ethics, right? It's like the, when your actions start to affect other people, you don't have unfettered liberty. It's never been intended as that. So when you, so it's, it's, it's two sides of the same coin. The first side is you have to understand that your sense of the world and what you are allowed to do changes when you enter a public sphere, right? And the other side is that when you do bump into those people, when you are negotiating in these little moments or, or big moments about what is allowable, what's permissible, what ought we to do, what should we do, what can we do, that the people who are bumping into each other come from very different places. They have very different upbringings. They have very different um, worldviews. And the answer isn't simply, I'm right and you're wrong. The answer is, OK, what is the, this is a very contractualist argument. For those of you who are real philosophy nerds, contractualism is invented by a man named Tim Scanlon, uh, emeritus at Harvard, who, who believes that when coming up with rules for our society, we ought to sit around a big table. We start pitching rules. Everyone can veto those rules as long and say like that we will not adopt that rule as long as that person, and this is the key, is being reasonable. He, on, the only people who get to sit at the table are reasonable people. Now, how do you define reasonable? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, that's one thing philosophers are great at, putting out awesome ideas and then not explaining them. So, <laughs> uh, but essentially what he says is you are a reasonable person if you restrain your own needs and desires to the same degree, not more or less, but to the same degree that I restrain my needs and desires. It's a little bit technical, but it essentially means like everyone's got to give a little bit. Everybody has to, to understand that their way of thinking about this situation is not the way, that there is another person involved in the transaction. And so when it comes to judging other people, I think it's important to take all of this stuff into account into context and to, and to remind yourself that in order to sit at this table, you have to restrain your needs and wants and desires to the same extent that you want them to. And once you get into that mindset, it becomes a lot less, you're a lot less likely to simply write someone off or judge them with a, with a broad brush or whatever, because you are now understanding that you have to, there's a mutual tension here. You have to come at this 
um, in that you have to limit yourself in the same way you would like that person to limit him or herself.